So the parathyroid gland makes parathyroid hormone. Let's focus here for a second. The parathyroid glands are located right around the thyroid. So this is the thyroid right here around our trachea. And we see that we have four parathyroid glands, two on the left, two on the right. So that's our parathyroid gland. They make parathyroid hormones, specifically the chief cells of the parathyroid gland. And the function of parathyroid hormone is to increase serum calcium and decrease serum phosphate. Okay. Whenever you see parathyroid hormone, expect that serum calcium will go up, serum phosphate will decrease. And how does that do that? Well, let's look at the parathyroid hormone here. And the way it does it is it acts on multiple things. It acts on the bone, causes bone resorption of calcium and phosphate. So it's going to resorb the bone, it's going to release calcium and phosphate into the blood. In the meantime, you're going to be breaking down, you're going to be weakening the bone a little bit. So that's important to know. It's going to act on the kidneys as well, directly on the kidneys to increase calcium reabsorption from the urine. And then it's going to, it's going to decrease phosphate reabsorption. So it's going to cre increase secretion of phosphate. So you're going, to, you're going to retain calcium, you're going to pee out phosphate in the kidney. And it's also going to act on the kidney to increase vitamin D activation. Remember, that's where vitamin D is activated. And so vitamin D, now you get more vitamin D thanks to PTH. And vitamin D goes to the intestines, as you can see here. It's going to increase calcium as well as phosphate absorption in the intestines. So from the food you eat, it's going to increase its, the food with all that calcium and phosphate is going to go down to your intestines and it's going to be in the lumen. And then vitamin D is going to go and tell the intestine to absorb all of that. So the way this is triggered, how we get more PTH is if you have decreased calcium or increased phosphate, again, that makes total sense because that's the whole function. The whole function of parathyroid hormone is to increase this calcium and decrease phosphate. So these are the, obviously will make the perfect trigger. And then low vitamin D, and that's why we have this big red thing here. Vitamin D normally inhibits parathyroid hormone uh, secretion. So if you have less vitamin D, then you get less blockage and you increase your parathyroid hormone. Now, I want to talk about another hormone here. This is calcitonin. And calcitonin is made in the thyroid. It's made in the thyroid and not in the parathyroid. But I'm including it in this section here, in this parathyroid thyroid gland section, because it has pretty much the opposite function as parathyroid hormone. So it's secreted by parafollicular cells, C cells of the thyroid. Uh, that's something to know because you're going to see that in thyroid cancer later. But the whole goal of this is to decrease serum calcium. It's going to do that through decreasing bone resorption. Okay, decreases bone resorption, decreases this. There's less calcium release of, into the blood, and so you um, you have decreased the calcium. And obviously, the feedback would be it's, it's a feedback mechanism, like like you always see in endocrine. So if you have too much serum calcium, you want to decrease it, and you're going to do that by increasing calcitonin. And the way we remember this is I remember cal, calc, and then bone, in. You're putting calcium into the bones. Calcium stays in the bones. You don't get resorption of the bones. You don't get resorption of the bones leading to calcium release into the blood. It's calcium bone in. Okay. So now let's talk about pathology here. So primary hyperparathyroidism. So when we see primary, this is the first time we see it, but we see it multiple times. Primary means that the that the there's a problem in the in the gland, in the primary gland that's making that hormone. So the gland that makes par parathyroid hormone is the parathyroid gland. So primary hyperparathyroidism hyper, hyper, hyper arises from parathyroid overproduction due to a parathyroid adenoma or hyperplasia. So it's just making too much just because there's something wrong with that gland. And what you're going to get, remember, parath hyper, par remember parathyroid hormone increases, what does it do? Increases calcium decreases phosphate again and, and your symptoms then are going to be from hypercalcemia there's a nice mnemonic for this stones bones groans psychiatric overtones remember that stones bones grown psychiatric overtones for hypercalcemia and you can see it you get a hypercalcemia from other things other than primary hyperparathyroidism but this happens to be um, the main symptom in primary hyperparathyroidism so again what do you get you get stones bones groans psychiatric overtones. What the heck am I talking about? Stones means kidney stones. You have too much calcium, too much calcium goes into the urine and it makes calcium kidney stones. You can get calcium oxalate stones, calcium phosphate stones, and that can cause pain. Now bones, B 
bones is bone pain due to osteitis fibrosa cystica. What, why that, what the heck is that and why? Why do we get osteitis fibrosa cystica? So first of all, let's look at the name. Cystica means the cystic, pro, the cystic bone spaces and this fibrous is replaced with fibrous tissue and osteitis just means the bone, the problem with the bone. It's a problem with the bone with cystic spaces filled with fibrous tissue and it re results because what does PTH do? Remember, PTH acts on the bones, causes reabsorption, resorption. So if you have over resorption, you get these, you get the, let's see, let's draw it out. Let's just draw it out for you, okay? You have this bone, PTH goes and attacks it, causes all these holes, okay? For it's too much, basically it's just from too much osteoclastic activity, you get resorption, and it's gonna be filled with fibrous tissue and you get osteitis fibrosis cystica and you get bone pain. Groans is abdominal pain and other GI symptoms of constipation, pancreatitis, psychiatric overtones, which means psychiatric CNS disturbances. You can get depression, you can get seizures. So stone, stones, bones, groans, psychiatric overtones, hypercalcemia. So you're gonna see it a lot. It's high yield. Memorize that mnemonic. Now, what will the labs be? So, what will our PTH levels be in primary hyperparathyroidism? PTH will obviously be up. What will our calcium levels be? We just said well, that's our whole problem here, hypercalcemia. What is phosphate? The whole problem. One of the main functions of the PTH hormone, parathyroid hormone, is decreased phosphate. And then what will ALKFOS levels be? ALKFOS levels will be increased. Remember, ALKFOS measures osteoblast activity and as well as I mean, indirectly osteoclast activity. So we have increased osteoclast activity here. And remember that and we get osteo increased ALKFOS because the osteoblasts are needed to activate the osteoclast. And again, with this bone resorption, you also see increased urinary CMP. CMP. So you're going to see that again and again. Next is secondary hyperparathyroidism. So secondary means that the hormone is too much hormone, obviously. But the reason for that is not from the primary gland making it, but due to a second, some other cause that stimulates that gland to make more. So it's, in this case, it's increased PTH in response to low calcium and or high phosphate. Remember, those are the triggers for PTH release. Most commonly, you're going to see this in chronic renal failure. And why would we see that? Remember that PTH acts on the kidney. Remember that. Remember, PTH acts directly on the kidney to increase calcium re absorption, reabsorption, and phosphate excretion. So that can directly lead to this problem right here if your kidney has a problem. And remember the other thing the kidney does, the PTH activates the kidney to, um, it causes the kidney to activate vitamin D. Vitamin D is super important for calcium, uh, calcium absorption in the small intestine. So again, you get more low calcium and you, you're gonna have, the other thing is you're gonna, and you're gonna have high phosphate because you're not filtering out that phosphate. So, all of these are going to trigger high PTH and you get a secondary hyperparathyroidism. What are clinical features here? Well, you're going to have too much parathyroid hormone and that parathyroid hormone is going to directly act on the bones, going to cause bone reabsorption, you're going to get bone pain. And the other symptoms, you're going to get symptoms of underlying disease. So for example, chronic renal failure. Okay, and if you, you remember the renal lecture, you might try to remember what were some symptoms of chronic renal failure. Remember you had problems from the failure of renal function so this is a whole throwback to the renal problem. So you have problems for renal function, uh, renal filtration, so filtration problems, and you have hormone problems because remember the, the kidney helps make some hormones. Specifically, it makes EPO, so you get anemia because you're not making EPO. And you can also get, um, well, you get the vitamin D problem. You get, this, so this is the whole problem. You get secondary hyper PTH because you're not getting vitamin D activation. And then you also get filtration, you get, you fail to filter, you fail to excrete water and sodium, you get edema, you get this, you get a, it's a, it's a metabolic acidosis, hyperkalemic, okay, because you're not, you're not excreting this stuff, you're not excreting this, you're not excreting your, your hydrogen ions, you get metabolic acidosis, and you get uremia, uremia. Or uremia symptom. You're not filtering out that uremia. You get um, you get all this nitrogenous waste products. You get uremic symptoms. What were uremic symptoms? Remember, you can get 
platelet dysfunction, you can get pericarditis, you get all these GI symptoms like nausea, vomiting, you can get asterixtus. So that's our little throwback to renal failure here. So that's what you get. You get symptoms of those diseases as well as this bone pain. And what will our labs be? So what will PTH be in secondary hyperparathyroidism? PTH is up. What will calcium be? What will calcium be in secondary hyperparathyroidism? Calcium might, is low. You might think, well, why is, it, why is it low if I have extra high PTH and PTH increases calcium? Calcium is low because this is the whole problem here. The whole problem in secondary hyper-PTH is decreased calcium. Okay, And then thus, what, what will phosphate be? Well, phosphate is going to depend. Okay, Phosphate depends on the etiology. If it's a chronic renal failure problem, phosphate's high. Okay, because remember, we're not filtering out phosphate. Phosphate stay in the body of high phosphate. If it's another problem, let's say you have a vitamin D deficiency. Vitamin D deficiency leading to low calcium, low phosphate. You get low phosphate in a vitamin D deficiency. So it depends on the etiology here. Okay, And then what will ALKFOS be? ALKFOS will be up. Same idea. You have too much PTH, messing up the bone. You have bone pain. You get increased ALKFOS levels. Okay, so that's it for, um, actually we have more. Now we have hypoparathyroidism. So that's the lack of PTH. We just talked about too much. Now we're going to talk about too little. So you get lack of PTH, you get hypocalcemia. So hypocalcemia is going to cause all your symptoms. Why, can you, why would you have hypo-PTH? Well, simple, most simplest one is loss of a parathyroid gland. You can either surgery, sometimes you can take it out. You can take it out. Because you have too much, you can take it out because you're purposely doing it because you have too much parathyroid action going on. Or when you're taking out the thyroid gland, remember that the parathyroid glands are right there. You might damage your parathyroid gland during that surgery. Or you can have an autoimmune destruction. So surgery, autoimmune destruction, damage the parathyroid gland. And um, the other one is DeGeorge syndrome. DeGeorge syndrome is a throwback to embryology. So, the syndrome with defective development of the third and fourth pharyngeal pouch. And those are needed for development of the thymus and the parathyroid glands. You're going to have hypoplastic thymus, hypoplastic parathyroid gland. So what are our symptoms? Symptoms would include hypocalcemia and hyperphosphatemia. And what you're going to get with hypo hypocalcemia is you're going to get tetany and hyperexcitable nerves. Okay. Tetany is just a contraction your muscles are all contracted. It's like tetanus. And you get hyperexcitable nerves. So you just, you're, and that's actually going to, it's going to be illustrated here with this. I don't even know how to say this. In my four years, um, my four years, I don't know how to say Travostex sign or something. And Trisol sign. I don't know how to say that either. But tr this, this sign right here, Travostex sign, is, is when you tap the facial nerve, when you tap the cheek, to the facial nerves on the cheek. You can get contraction of the facial muscles. So again, it's overactive. You tap on the facial nerve, and the facial nerve is going to be overactive. And you get a contraction of the facial muscles. Trisole sign is when you occlude the brachial artery with a BP cuff, so like how you would normally just measure someone's uh, blood pressure, and then you get a carpal spasm because it's the it's occlusion. It's just basically what is it? Stimulates that nerve. Hyperexcitability. You get carpal spasm. So hypoparathyroidism. With hypo hypocalcemia, leading to these symptoms, uh, you have tetany, hyperexcitable nerves with these classic signs. Travostec cheek, trisole is the BP cuff one. Now, next one is a pseudo hypoparathyroidism. So it looks like a hypoparathyroidism, but it's not pseudo. And this is because the kidney is not responsive to PTH. So you get a hypocalcemia, that's why it looks like hypoparathyroidism, but you actually have increased PTH levels here. Okay, You're making PTH, but your kidney is not responding to it, so you get hypocalcemia. Because remember, your kid, you need that kidney to reabsorb calcium, what was it? Reabsorb calcium, excrete phosphate, and also activate vitamin D. This results from a defective GS protein alpha subunit that's inherited from the mother. You get the hypocalcemia, and you get also this classical physical findings um, basic presentation. Short fifth, fourth and fifth digits, that's your ring and your pinky finger. You get short stature, obesity, developmental delay. Classic presentation of a pseudo-hypoparathyroidism. 
hypocalcemia, short ring and, and uh, pinky finger, short stature, obesity, developmental delay. Now finally, pseudo pseudo hypoparathyroidism. I thought this was so confusing before. This is pseudo pseudo hypothyroidism. So this it looks like pseudo hypoparathyroidism. It looks like this, but it's not. It's different. Is it, and the reason why we call it this is the same physical exam findings as above, but there's no end organ resistance to PTH. So there's no problem with PTH here. It just lo it just has this physical finding. So it has fourth and fifth digit short, short stature, obesity, developmental delay. But there's actually the PTH is totally fine. You have normal PTH levels. You have normal calcium levels. Okay. And this occurs when you have the same defective GS protein alpha subunit, but it's inherited from the father rather than the mother. Okay. So that's it for our review of our parathyroid gland and all its problems. We covered the hyperparathyroid. We covered hypoparathyroid. Again, and all the problems is just comes from either hypercalcemia, hypocalcemia. Just really understand the effects of the parathyroid hormone. It affects the bones, it affects the kidneys, and that's how you get all your symptoms. So it's pretty simple. And then this is just a little bit of memorization. All right.